Welcome everyone, it's Mike Newton down here at Leatham Golf Academy. This little video, I'm going to have a little test for me personally here with regards to a driving iron. Now many of you will have seen my recent What's in the Bag video. I've obviously put some new irons in the bag there with some Wilson um, FG Tour V6s. Um, and I'm just going to look at the, the driving iron out here. Now, driving irons to me have always been a, a big, I'm a big fan. I've always grew up with a sort of one and two iron. Never really had a fairway wood hybrids. I've never really sort of gone with that higher ball flight. I've always liked that low ball flight off the tee, especially in the windier conditions. So, as many of you have seen, I'm playing the Shrixen U45 driving iron here, which is an 18 degree. This is a two iron. Okay. And now I have this with a graphite shaft and an X flex. So, what I love about this is the forgiveness of it. Um, but sometimes it might just fly a little bit too high on me. Now, obviously, I can start knocking it down, but then I'm sort of making more of a held off sort of swing position and then maybe just giving up a little bit of yardage here. So I'm really intrigued here. I'm going to put it up against the PXG one iron. So they're driving iron here, which is the 0311X, but in the one iron. Now, I've got this in a, in a steel shaft here because, again, I want to make just an experiment here with a steel. I'm just, again, I'm just maybe want to see if I can get this flight down a little bit. Um, but obviously, I don't want to lose any yards here. Okay, so I've got this in a KBS uh, 120 in a stiff here. So I'm not going to go X in this because obviously, going into steel, it'll play a little bit firmer than the graphite. So I'm just going to go stiff here because I don't want this coming out too low. Okay, so I'm going to put these head to head here and just let's have a look at some data through GC2 here. Maybe see if there's any differences between these two clubs. If I get any more yardage, obviously, I'm keen to look at dispersion, but also control of ball flight. Right, so I'm going to start with the Strixon U45, which is my um, my obviously iron that I've got in my bag, and I've had it in the bag for a good couple of years here now. So as I say, this is 18 degree, two iron. It's the first one hit. Yeah, it's a super strike. There's, there's absolutely no issues with getting this flighted in the air here. You know, it is, as I say, very, it feels very forgiving, it feels very easy to use, which... Obviously, it's a big plus, and probably why one of the reasons why it stayed in my bag for so long. Yeah, it feels beautiful. I mean, I do enjoy it. It's a forged head. I do enjoy that soft feel of this. Obviously, it's a hollow, which all these driving irons are now. They're more of that hollow construction. Okay, that was a toey hit there, so that wasn't a great strike. It's just moved fractionally right of target there. But that didn't really drop off massive. That's 214 carry there, and my best was 222 carry. Okay, so I'm just going to hit one more shot with this, and then we'll flick into the PXG and just see if we can maybe get a, a different ball flight, and whether that is better or not, we'll have a look at some numbers. Yeah, it feels great. Say, so, big fan of that, you know, it is my favourite, it's been in there for quite a long time now, so this is going to have to do something to really sort of have a possibility of jumping the bag for me. Okay, so now I've got the PXG 03-1X1 iron in my hands here. So 15 degree loss, it's 3 degrees stronger loft than the 2 iron that I currently have. And obviously the biggest thing I feel there, the difference is the weight. Obviously that, mine being a graphite shaft, feels a lot lighter. Which when you get into a long club, sometimes with a steel, it feels quite a heavy club to hit and maybe a little bit harder to swing. And that, that's probably one downside I feel at the moment is the, the weight of it. Possibly... Can, can overcome that, you know, once I get used to it, but let's get this first one hit here. Right, wow, that's gone out like a bullet. Okay, now that was definitely lower there, that's come out really, really penetrating. I think if, if that was sort of into a win scenario, that flight would be absolutely perfect. I mean, that's carried out at 227 there, so it's a bit more distance there. It'd be interesting to see. Obviously, launch will be lower there, but interesting to look at some spin numbers as well. Right, okay, that I didn't quite get. Definitely lower flight again, it's just squeezed off a little bit of the fade there. 
didn't quite get the strike, but again, the, it wasn't a high ballooning sort of weak shot. It was still really penetrating in a cut shot there. Interesting about that. Yeah, I mean, that carried 225. This is good. It's a good bit of distance here. And that's, I'm, I'm guessing these are going to really trot out in the summertime as well when they hit the ground. Okay, that's a little bit of a pulley one. Again, it's really low. Could even be a stretch. Definitely, I think this would be definitely a club that you wouldn't want to be hitting into a green with because there's no chance of you getting it up there to sort of to stop. But then again, you know, with a one aim, it's probably not. You won't put this in the bag for hitting into greens. It's more obviously off the tee. Maybe a real long par fives where you're trying to chase one up onto the green. Yeah, again, it's just really low penetrating flight. I do like that flight, I could maybe, I'd probably say I'd like to see it a touch higher possibly, but again it's that windy situation, that flight would be absolutely perfect. Yeah, quite like that. Okay, right, okay, so let's jump on and have a little, quick look at some numbers there. And see if there's any differences. Um, obviously, flight differences is massive there to me visually. But let's have a look at some spin and some carry distances as average. Right, okay, let's have a quick look at some numbers here. So, obviously, we've got the Shrixen on the bottom here and the PXG on the top. So, we're looking at ball speed here. So, 144 against 142 on average. So, obviously, as you expect, three degrees stronger than the loft, we're going to see a little bit more ball speed with the one iron with the PXG. So, that's as you would expect. Launch angle here, this is definitely what I noticed. You see 6.8 on average here. This came out really low. And probably, if I'm going to be honest, probably a bit too low in my eyes. Um, because when you couple that up with the spin number, you see spin at 2.6 against 3.9. So it's a very different spin model there with a very different launch. Okay. Now, in probably in an ideal world, I'd probably like to see this 10 launch being kept, but then have that 2.6 spin. And I think that would be the, the probably the perfect scenario here, um, just to get this ball keep travelling through the wind. Mine maybe just spins up a little bit. See some high spin numbers there. When I don't maybe just miss the strike slightly, it just um, can sort of pop up in the air a little bit more, and that's where it just drops off a touch on my on my distance there. So I think with the PXG, I'm loving that low flight. Okay, but maybe just a bit too low with not enough spin on it. So you see the carry distance is only th oops, today, sorry. There's only three yards difference there. Two seventeen against two twenty. Okay, so not a massive difference on actual carry distance there. But obviously, you know, descent angle there. You know, it's coming at peaking at sixteen yards, which isn't high at all. That's really low against twenty eight. So granted, the PXG is probably going to hit the ground and really run. So great again for that that windy scenario into the wind you know you're trying to get a ball chasing on that maybe the harder surface in the summer obviously the pxg is is a really good option there right guys so there we have it um my strix and u45 two iron against the pxg one iron there so um some positive some negative there i think if we go in terms of looks I quite like the look of both. I do like the look of that PXG. I think it does sit nice behind the ball. You do see that back edge sticking out at the back of the club. doesn't bother me at all. In a way, it gives me a bit of confidence. I know I've got some sort of protection around it in terms of forgiveness. Uh, in terms of feel, I think the Shrixen feels a little bit better to me. But I think purely because I've got it in that graphite shaft, it doesn't feel quite as harsh. The PXG feels really explosive off the club face. Maybe not quite as soft, but that's probably because of the shaft differences as opposed to the probably the softness of the actual heads. Obviously, these, these are both sort of hollow designs. Um, in terms of ball flight and launch, the one iron looked really fizzy, which was great. And as I say, windy conditions, that would be absolutely ideal. But it's not always windy, is it? And sometimes I think I'd probably like to see that flight and maybe just a tiny bit higher. Probably a, a, maybe an option here is just to go PXG 2 iron, just a touch more loft here, keeping that same spin, but just upping that launch a little bit. I think that would probably be a really good sort of combination which I may do a video in the in you know going forward and maybe just do a separate one here but I was really intrigued to see what this one iron would sort of do against mine here which is the reason why I'm doing this video. Uh, in terms of the spin I like the low spin there but a couple of that really low launch the ball's dropping out of the sky a little bit too quick there so we don't see a massive yardage gain there considering we're going from a one iron to a sort of two iron. 
Uh, dispersion wise, it, they were quite similar. Like I said, I just had the one that sneaked off a little bit right with that PXG, but then again, I had one that I just turned over a touch left of my sort of two iron. So dispersion wise, between the two, there wasn't a great deal in it. Okay, so I think at this stage here, I probably wouldn't be swapping um, the clubs. As I say, I've had that in, the, in my bag for two years now. The, the U45, it's, it's, it is. I'm a big, massive fan of it. So it's going to take a bit to nudge this out of the bag here. So I think at the moment that's going to stay in. But I'm going to maybe do another video here and maybe put the two iron in there. Um, and maybe just that could be a little bit more of a contender to replace maybe uh, the Shrixen uh, U45. Okay, guys. Thanks very much for watching the video. Do comment down below. Have you guys got these driving irons in the bag? You know, is it a, is it a popular option? Do you like to see that lower ball flight there? Maybe you guys possibly play at windier golf courses and you see that lower ball flight. It might be a little bit more appealing than the hybrid of that higher sort of ball flight. So, you know, comment down below. Let me know. Please do hit that subscribe button. Give the video a thumbs up. Share it around with your friends. And hopefully I'll catch up with you all very soon.